Can Zach Bryan, Cody Jenks, and Mike and the Moon Pies ever expect to really get played on mainstream country radio? That's the question of the day. Hello, fellow sad boys. I'm rocking the new Crying Cowboy Sad Boys merch, which you can pick up at GradySmithShop.com because we're dealing with some sad boy country acts in today's video. There's a little mini moment happening of some of the people in our posse in the independent or quasi-independent or maybe just not mainstream Nashville major label country world that are trying to maybe appear on mainstream country radio. And I just want to break it down. So a few days ago, a lot of people noticed that Zach Bryan made his first ever appearance on Billboard's Country Airplay chart, which measures how much songs are getting played on country radio based on a whole different panel of stations. He appeared at number 59 out of 60 things on the chart, so it's not like he's got some big number one radio single, but it's still notable that someone like Zach, who started off completely independent, who hasn't played the Nashville game, and notably who is on Warner Records, which is not the same as Warner Music Nashville, is appearing on such a mainstream chart because it means at least some radio stations are playing something in the orange, which is kind of the obvious runaway breakout viral hit from this album, American Heart. To you, I'm just a man. To me, you're all I am. Despite the fact that it has not been officially serviced to country radio, which means the label has not told stations that they want it to be played, nor are they paying a staff to promote the song to program directors, nor has it been officially uploaded into the kind of servers like All Access that make it easier for DJs to play the song. The people that are playing it have had to go out of their way and put this song on their station, maybe by bringing the file over into their system themselves. Now on a different chart, Media Base's Activator chart is none other than Mike and the Moon Pies. Yes, the makers of my number one album of 2021 with their song, Paycheck to Paycheck, which is at number 59. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Now hear me that that is not that big of a deal in the scheme of things. That means a few stations are maybe playing paycheck to paycheck, but for a totally independent band from Texas that does not have the gargantuan marketing budget of someone that's on one of the majors, it's definitely notable. Now to make this moment even kind of stranger, Cody Jenks has announced that he is going to be releasing Loud and Heavy, his kind of iconic single from the Adobe Sessions album in 2015 to radio in August. Now you can see in this ad in Country Air Check that they are boasting about how many hundreds of millions of streams this song has, and they, I guess, are taking a gamble and seeing if radio will play it seven years later. Anyone can release a song to country radio. It doesn't mean they have to play it, so it's not an inherently big deal. But I do think it is notable that someone as fiercely independent as Cody Jinx is at least seeing if the powers that be at various radio stations will play this huge hit that has demonstrated audience feedback in favor of it when they make it available to them and just say, hey, we'd like you to play it. Obviously, as you and me both know, some of the coolest, biggest, most notable, most passionately followed country artists of today are nowhere to be found on country radio. I mean, Tyler Childers has gone platinum multiple times with songs like White House Road and Feathered Indians, and yet he's not on the radio. I go running through the thicket. Whiskey Myers is one of the hottest bands in country music, and you're way more likely to hear their music on Yellowstone than you are on the radio. Muscadine Bloodline can independently drop a song like their new banger, Me On You. And rack up so many more streams in just a couple days than a lot of the major label counterparts, and yet, they're not on radio. And perhaps most notably, Sturgill Simpson can play to freaking arenas, and yet you'll still have someone like Charlie Cook, the VP of Cumulus Media, say he doesn't really get his music and he's looking for sing-along hits, and so he's not even ever listened to him. Yes, I'm still salty about that 2018 interview. And so to be frank, I'm pretty dubious about whether Zach Bryan or Mike and the Moon Pies or Cody Jinx are actually going to find any momentum on country radio. And I'm talking kind of the big corporately programmed stations. I'm not talking about 
independent stations, especially down in Texas, where obviously they might actually get played. Because when it comes to mainstream country radio, the biggest recurrent songs right now are things like Parmalee's Take My Name. But baby, it's the right time. Knew it from the first time that I laid eyes on you. Or Dustin Lynch and Mackenzie Porter's Thinking About You. I was just thinking about that weekend I don't come but in They've got that big, booming pop sensibility about them, and they are a far cry from the spare style of something like Something in the Orange. The orange touches all things around. Plus, even artists that exist firmly within the mainstream but have a little bit more of a divergent sound have struggled to get played on country radio. Like, I don't think the public could have demonstrated more clearly that it liked what Chris Stapleton was doing than it did after the 2015 CMA Awards when he blew up. And yet, it took years for radio to kind of catch on to that and actually be willing to play stuff like Broken Halos, which became his first number one in 2018. Ooh, there's Morgan. And why Tennessee Whiskey never actually got the official push, I don't know. Although that hasn't stopped it from becoming one of the biggest songs in my lifetime in all of country music. And yes, I know it's a cover. Save your comments. Casey Musgraves would be another example of that. And after her first album, she basically was fully ignored by country radio to such an extent that she just sort of cut them out of her marketing plan and released her music direct to the fans and kind of rose to the next tier of fame and attention and Grammy awards because of it. Still, country radio is a giant megaphone and there is so much kind of passive music discovery that happens because songs are on the radio and people become familiar with them and then go check out that music. And I feel like you can see that when you go onto Spotify on a computer and look at the actual number of listens to the album cuts of some of these big major label stars. Like the singles will have tens of millions of streams. And then sometimes the ones that haven't gotten radio exposure, they literally will have like a couple hundred thousand listens. And it's such a disparity that you're like, man, is anyone listening to this guy or girl specifically? Or is it just because that song's on the radio? So obviously it does have some power, but an artist like Zach Bryan is kind of the exact opposite. He's not on the radio. All of his 34 songs have a ton of streams and listens. People are pursuing him directly. His giant shows, which have scaled so quickly, are selling out. But does radio want to be a part of that? Something I've talked about on the channel before, especially in my big radio video, is that the industry likes to promote its own. It likes to support the acts that came from the system. And I don't think that's that conspiratorial. It's just kind of human nature. You know, you want to do well by people that are in the same kind of swimming pool as you. And yet, I do think of the acts I'm talking about in this, Zach probably does have the best chance of maybe getting some radio airplay. Simply because the phenomenon of how much he has listened to is extravagant. Like he's had one of the biggest country albums of the year. He's kind of exploded onto everybody's radar, even the people that like to ignore the independent scene. And yet it wouldn't shock me if him and his team don't really care if they're on the radio or not. And it leads me to ask the question, why should I care? And I go back and forth on this all the time. Like, why not just let radio play elevator music and ignore it, rather than hold out hope that some of my favorite music is actually gonna get played on the radio as these artists have the door continually shut in their face. And I kind of feel like Ron Swanson in that one episode of Parks and Rec, when he's talking about awards. I still think awards are stupid but they'd be less stupid if they went to the right people. The institution of radio, in some ways I do want to see it replaced and I wanna be a part of that kind of energy to create new institutions. And yet there's another part of me that would like to see it kind of reformed. Although I definitely lean heavily more to the just let's ignore it and replace it, which I think largely you can do in the age of the internet. The other interesting thing to me about these releases is just the idea that Loud and Heavy is seen by Cody Jenks and his team as a viable hit seven years after its release. I have been observing all year the way that old songs can just have a very relevant and new life because of things like TikTok and because they can be rediscovered through various you know, social media on the internet. It's almost like listeners are becoming a little more agnostic about the hype of a new release, but they're fine rediscovering things because it's all available to them on streaming. I mean, the obvious example here would be something like Fleetwood Mac's Dreams, which obviously had a big resurgence. You could even say the same about Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill, which Stranger Things has 
turned into a big hit after 34 years. But you can also see it clicking around various artists' Spotify profiles. I noticed recently when I went to Taylor Swift's profile, her number one most streamed song is a track from Reputation that was never a single called Don't Blame Me. And I think artists are becoming increasingly willing to dig into their back catalog and say, hey, I feel like this song didn't get as much shine as it even could have. Megan Trainer re-released Tidal after it went viral on TikTok. Kit Moore recently tried to push Crazy One More Time, a redone version of it. That was off his first album to radio. And I will say it didn't really work. And now Cody Jinx is doing the same thing with Loud and Heavy because clearly he sees there's some potential there. And it kind of makes sense. Media is so stratified now that I really will get people coming up to me sincerely and saying things like, dude, have you heard of this guy, Tyler Childers? I just heard this song, Feathered Indians, and it's amazing. And that's probably funny to people here that are like so in it, but to a lot of the normies out there, you know, they still do discover these things years later and it feels fresh and new to them. And so while full disclosure, I do not see Loud and Heavy becoming a big country radio hit, it almost feels like it would work better on rock radio than country radio. I do think it's notable that for whatever reason, Cody Jinx is just seeing. And I would love if Mike and the Moon Pies became some big hit makers because I think their music's amazing and I would love Hour on the Hour to become a big mainstream hit so I can just scream. But I don't need no troubadour. I don't need no troubadour at the top of my lungs, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up about it. So that's really all I got to say about this subject. I wanted to make a quick one-off video about some of the sad boys favorite artists receiving some country airplay or at least going for it in some cases and I'd love to know what you think about it. Do you think any of these songs are actually going to take off or we should just give up the ghost completely, say who cares, recognize that the music we like is already bigger and more relevant and cooler uh, than a lot of the songs that are on the radio and go about our days. <laughs> I don't know. I go both ways about it. I feel like that's the nature of being a true music fan is you contradict yourself every two seconds. One day you feel passionately about this issue. The next day you've totally forgotten it. And you know, welcome to my brain. But I gotta say, I feel like the world is waking up to this sort of alternative side of country music lately. And I've been paying my dues for like a decade into this argument. And so I'm a, I'm a happy camper lately. I'm a happy camper as a music fan. So that's all from me. Uh, bye.